not only to Inside the Treehouse, but welcome to a brand new year, new year, new stupid, all coming at you from inside this stupid little treehouse. So welcome to the very first, not only episode of the new year, but the very first Friday of 2024. You've made it. Yay. Yay. I have a question, though. Is it really, is it? New Year, new stupid, or is it New Year, same stupid? See, I struggled with that when I made the post, and I wasn't sure because I've I've gone both ways <laughs> on what to say, not the other thing. Um, because I played with the idea before, like when we first launched the podcast, it was, hey, it's kind of a new show, but it's not. Is it the same stupid? Is it new stupid? I would. How 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 do you position it? How do you sell it? And I just I just. I went with New Year, New Stupid because I wanted to use the word new twice. <laughs> stupid 2.0. Damn it, I should have gone with that. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> I'll make a note for next year. Stupid 3.0. Yeah. <laughs> We're always but updating the stupid. <laughs> oh, hey, you got to keep the stupid fresh. We learned a lot from the Duncan man in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Got to wake up bright and early and you got to make the stupid. Yeah. Got to keep people happy. <laughs> But it's interesting because uh, we took a couple of weeks off uh, physically from from doing the show. Um, listener wise, it was really only about a, actually not even a week because we released episodes on our normal schedule, all the way up to and including the very first day of the year, which was of course Monday the first. Um, but we were able to take a little time off, and yeah. in that time, we have now figured out that taking time off, if you're a, a, a megalomaniac CEO time off for your employees can be bad as mm-hmm. we've learned. Like maybe Scrooge was right. Maybe he was looking out for a uh, was it crotchet crack it. What was his damn name? Bob. Cr- <laughs> See, you don't know either. Bob Cratchit. Bob okay. Cratchit. Bob Cratchit. Yeah. Maybe he was looking out for Bob Cratchit's best interest. Yeah. Because Nobody, we managed over these two weeks, over the holidays, yeah. we are limping into 2024 a shell of the men we once were. <laughs> because Raj got into a car accident, not his fault, but still had happened, and you're still reeling from the effects it, of that car wreck. Trey yeah. managed to suck up the flu at some point over the holidays. Oh, uh, yeah. And I mean, for the most part, I'm okay. But you two are <laughs> really, really, if I can be so frank, in the shit. Yeah, I I, I like to think of us because uh, I I didn't know you had the flu, and I don't the train. I don't think you knew I had a car wreck. I, or maybe because I think we talked about it before. Uh, but like, I didn't know you had the flu, and I was thinking to myself, like, you know, we really didn't talk to each other very much uh, during these couple weeks off that we had. And then it just reminded me, like, we're very much like if if this was a band, we're very Motley Crue. Like, we don't talk to each other at all until it's time for the show. Like, yeah. that, like that's we get that's our fill of each other when we're in here. Yeah. Outside of that, and we scatter. <laughs> we go and do things and experience things, and then it's very much like the listener. Then you come back in the treehouse and you share those experiences with one another because we yeah. weren't there for those things in between. Yeah, uh, I did. I did get in the car. It was very nice. Uh, a, a couple of people, a couple of the listeners, reached out uh, to see how I was doing over the break. Unlike you two, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm bad about that. <laughs> oh, Raj, let me. I'll, I'll give you a really a Cliff Notes version of my my holidays. Okay, Chris, Christmas night I spent in the ER with my mom who had COVID, and oh. she was in the hospital all the way through Sunday, New Year's Eve. Wow. And then on Sunday, New Year's Eve, actually, it's, I started feeling it Saturday night, but then on Sunday, I, by the time, by the time the ball dropped, I had 102 fever. No, that's. And yesterday was the first day I had fever for basically 72 hours. And then yesterday, finally it, it broke. And, uh, but wow. so yeah, that, that, that was my, my luxurious, uh, you know, holiday vacation. But is. but you didn't have to go into the did, did you still have to work? Uh, I, I I went into work on on Christmas or on New Year's Eve because obviously it's a big night and and it was by the time that was the worst part. It's the worst flu I've ever had and and okay. the body aches is what made it. I mean there was a point where I was like my toenails hurt. Wow. And 
Wow. Uh, but I started, uh, my kidneys were hurting and I was like, okay, I like, I'm, I'm useless. Like, I, I yeah. felt so bad and I, I'll work through a lot, but it, it, I was at a point I was like, I can't do this. And yeah, I literally, I, I left, I think I probably left work. Uh, I got there at five, left at eight and, uh, yeah. you know, rang in the new year, just praying for death. <laughs> <laughs> Happy, uh, happy New Year! New I, didn't, Year. I didn't hear that story on CNN's uh, New Year's Eve thing. <laughs> I saw I saw some sort of clip of John Mayer in a bar with a bunch of cats with Anderson Cooper and and Andy Cohen, but I did, I don't remember anyone on New Year's Rock and Eve or CNN's whatever uh, woke New Year's Eve, whatever it was. No one said. No one rang in the New Year going like, you know how I'd like to start this year dead dead <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh well that's not uh, yeah but uh did you did you have the advantageous side of uh of getting ripped uh after the flu like you lost some weight coughing strengthened the core like uh you look in the mirror like hey man uh, it, you know it sucked yeah. but look well, look, yeah, look daddy's look got good. some abs yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> time to take some boudoir photos <laughs> 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 you took it a little too far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, did you, did so you you're saying you didn't think of Trey and, and lingerie and fishnets? <laughs> now I do, and I can't unsee that. <laughs> yeah, good because I want to make sure it's. I'm not the only one having to visualize that. But it's but all, all his lingerie is still in burnt orange, so that's the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he may be naughty, but he still has school spirit. <laughs> That's, that's, that's actually, one of those. That's new actually how bad I felt. <laughs> that's how bad I felt. I didn't watch. I I, I really didn't watch the game uh, on Monday night. Oh, it was the Texas bowl game. It wow. was good. It was. I know they lost, but it was. Uh, a, I, I went and watched it with some friends, and uh, it was very sweet. My buddy is a UT alum, and he had his daughter with him. His daughter's at uh, eight or nine years old, and it was forty-seven seconds left, and it was it was a wrap. And uh, we were starting to close out and everything. And she's, she's got her UT hat on and she's got her UT shirt on. She's like, there's still 40 seconds. This is a little girl. She goes, 47 seconds left. A lot of football. And I was like, yeah, okay. You, <laughs> you could know, have said you know, that. Yeah. You could have told me this story and not told me her age. And I would have told yeah. you, tell me that's a young Longhorn fan without telling me it's a young Longhorn fan. <laughs> Trey knows. Trey, as a Longhorn fan and a Cowboy fan, is, is very close with this with disappointment and but, she's so young she's not there yet but she'll get there yeah yeah i, I, I remember those back. idealistic younger years where you know you thought it, it, it can happen but they're, they're not but gonna they, break my did, heart but they they got the ball back uh with four, 46 seconds left to go and she goes she just goes daddy see and then we all sat back down like we were just schooled by a child and people that had mm-hmm. left the bar and you could see people in the parking like that left it was a, a sidecar social people you could see people like was Turn, turn around in the parking lot and just just park however like just like it just didn't even make sense like parking at angles and come running back in to watch they did lose which is you know but again, what, what they did but the, with, the with a kid. differently thrown ball or a, you know whatever the situation was i mean it was it was very close they had a chance very to close. actually pull that out they did, and it was like it was like a little Christmas miracle or a New Year's miracle. It's just like there's still time left, and you're like, no, there's not. And then like, and UT's got the ball back, and we all sat down and just looked at this child like, oh, she'll she'll now see what disappointment looks like. <laughs> she has 47 seconds to, to feel disappointed, <laughs> which kind of gets uh, me back to uh, to uh, Scrooge and and Bob Cratchit, and she's basically yeah. the tiny Tim of this story. Yes, because at the end of at the end of the book. You know, Tom, you know, Tiny Tim's like, and God bless us, everyone, because he got to yeah. live because Scrooge, you know, basically uh, yeah, I turned his thought, life I, around. Whereas eventually this little yeah. girl is going to come yeah. to understand what real life and disappointment are. So maybe again, we're back to maybe Scrooge had a point with, you know, kind of limiting expectations so you don't get too hopeful. Yeah, see, that's the th- that was the terminology that wasn't around when that book was written. Right. So maybe Scrooge wasn't Scrooge. He was just like, like you're saying, managing expectations. <laughs> <laughs> that actually does speak to the CEO corporate life culture thing. Yeah. Is the late 1800s when, when, when Dickens, the time period of which like Dickens is writing about a Christmas carol, Scrooge is awful. 
No, you can't have uh, more time off. No, you can't have PTO. No, we're not going to pay for your sick child's uh, surgery to save their life. That was horrific stuff back then, and it stood out. That's why it was such a, a poignant yeah. and popular story, whereas by today's standards, man, that's every day at a Fortune 500. Yeah. He was ahead of his time. Mm-hmm. I'm, when you I'm start, liking. you get 10 days of PTO. That's it. You only get five sick days. And no, those don't roll over year to year. And yeah. no, the insurance we're going to give you is not going to save your sick kid. So just, you know, still there come into work and give me your whole life. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes you just got to eat soup. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's just... <laughs> Happy New Year. (laughs) You're in the Treehouse. Visit us online at treehouseonair.com. You're listening to the Treehouse. Visit us online at treehouseonair.com. Like Cindy said, welcome back inside the treehouse. Time to leave your worries outside. Hang out with us in a brand new year, 2024, and the first episode of the year. And I want to make sure that we mention our fine sponsors in this new year so I don't completely lose out on any habits I've formed in the previous year. So this segment brought to you by our dear friends and sponsors at Cook DFW Roofing and Restoration to get your free roof inspection in case uh, you want to go up, not you go up, but you want to have someone go up there and see if uh, if your house got hit by any uh, stray New Year's Eve bullets. Daniel, (laughs) Daniel, uh, from DFW Roofing and Restoration, will be happy to go up there and check on that for you. So give them a call, 833-COOK-DFW or the website, cookdfw.com. And also want to mention our uh, sponsors, the Dallas Comedy Club, your new home for comedy in Dallas, Fort Worth. You got comedy five nights a week. It's actually where Raj was for uh, the New Year's Eve weekend in Dallas at the Dallas Comedy Club or ticket info for all the things they have going on at the Dallas Comedy Club. You can just go to dallas-comedyclub.com. That's dallas-comedyclub.com. Uh, your new home for comedy in Dallas is the Dallas Comedy Club. Raj, off the top of your head, because I'm waiting for their website to load, do you know who's at the Dallas Comedy Club uh, tonight, uh, this weekend? Uh, let me see. I can probably get it faster than your island uh, interweb. Um, that is that is very possible, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but I did see also uh, that they have what's called Primetime Improv on Friday and Saturday nights at 8.30, yeah, it's they great. do uh, interactive improv at the Dallas Comedy Club. That's where if you want to go to the uh, the improv show, they'll actually pull audience members up on the stage to take part in it. So uh, that's an additional thing they do there at the Dallas Comedy Club. That's uh, very cool and worth checking out. So if, uh, you yeah, and it's also really, if, yeah. If you go to the prime time thing, uh, get your tickets because it sells out every time. Uh, I didn't know that. I was like, I, I was walking in one day. I was like, "Hey, man, this is a this crowd is solid for this uh, next show." And I didn't see that the line for the other show, which was almost sold out as well for the stand up, uh, was on one side. Uh, and I'm walking up. I'm like, "This looks great." And they're like, "No, we're here for the because people do get pulled up on stage and people and that inter- interactive experience is what people uh, seem to dig." I would be mortified to try to wing Im- improv but uh people seem to enjoy it um i let's and, see if i can and don't they they do like improv classes there too don't they yeah they i mean they do cl- uh, this one i saw and i thought anybody that thinks that hey, you know you, I'm, hey my kid's super funny um i would take they have a, a classes for 11 to 17 so you can take your kid in and give you know see if your kid's uh the next Chappelle who started at 15 years old uh, but I, uh, I think if I'm correct, they might not be having shows right now. I know that uh, I know they've got it, the primetime imp- improv is happening Friday and Saturday night at 8:30. So I think that's taking the place of a quote unquote like regular headliner. Uh, yeah, they are uh, remodeling situation for this weekend. Yeah, they they are remodeling right now, so it is it's still open, still doing the the, the stand up, still doing um, uh, 
um, their improv stuff, but it's in the in the side room because they're adding because they sell out so fast. Uh, they're adding another fifty seats to the showroom. So that's awesome. They're currently under construction, but you can still go in the patio. So the bar still there. The side room still there with all the uh, all the uh, the improv and stand up. So just go check them out, and and you can you can give them a call. It's two one four eight one four nineteen eighty. It's two one four eight one four nineteen eighty, and you can get their schedule uh, for the week. Very cool. So uh, we mentioned how you, Trey, are kind of limping into the new year because you're still getting over having the flu. Um, uh, I'll tell you guys more about me and Tara's Christmas trip uh, hmm. on on Monday. Uh, but part of that story will also involve the flu. So got that oh. to look forward to on Monday. Um, and then, Raj, last time we talked to you, mm-hmm. it was the day after... You had just gotten into that wreck, yeah. And so I'm curious because you were you were pretty banged up the next day. Yeah, um, I mean, it was, by it banged was... up, I mean you had you know, like the band, you had a broken hand, you had a bandage on it, and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you were high because because you, you you was on <laughs> drugs, which you should be <laughs> after after uh. a major uh, uh, car wreck. So since I'm a terrible friend and I'm really bad about following up with people about how they're feeling or buying gifts. Or buying gifts mm-hmm. and using the show as the reason why I don't talk to people outside of it. I really need to work <laughs> on that. Maybe that's a New Year's resolution for myself. How are you feeling since the car uh, wreck? I I, I I I was high on life number one uh, because I don't I don't do I don't do the pills. I don't I don't like them. Uh, I, I busted up my hand. Raj, you and I are very similar in the sense that we drink enough to where we don't feel the need to supplement <laughs> uh, other yeah, things into yeah. the mix. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I just, I, I don't know. I, I, since I was a kid, like my, my mom took like stuff for her back and she took ibuprofen and then stuff to sleep and then stuff like all that stuff. And I would watch like her take that stuff. And I'm like, I just don't want to get in that habit. So I don't take Advil for headaches. Like I'll sleep it off. So but, uh, the, the, when I was leaving, when I was leaving the hospital that night, you know, they bandaged my hand up, which was really nice, uh, of them to do. I think it cost, uh, $6,000 for them to give me an ACE bandage. Uh, <laughs> yay. American health system. Yay. Uh, <laughs> so, um, they were like, you know, the, the doctor, wonderful, uh, Dr. Fletcher, she said, uh, you know, the first 24 to 48 hours, you're going to start to experience muscle soreness and put and you might find that, you know, something else is broken. So keep the hand, you know, where it is and Ugh. next day. Uh, yeah. Bandaged up hand. Saw you guys, uh, felt, felt fine. Was walking around, went and walked my dogs had to, again, I couldn't use my left hand, but I'm walking my dogs and did my stuff. Went to the grocery store and went and watched some wrestling, uh, and, uh, up in Oklahoma city. And I'm <laughs> coming back the next day and I'm like 48 hours. I'm like, you know what? She was right. A little stiffness in my knee, uh, a little mm-hmm. soreness in my neck, but that's about it. And I was like, you know what? If, if that's what, uh, if, if that's the best, the worst it's going to be, then so be it. Seventy-two hours later, however, wildly different story. Uh, I woke up. Did you wake morning. up with your femur sticking out of your leg? I felt like it. It felt <laughs> like it. Uh, I woke up, uh, and I don't curse anybody. You know, the lady ran the red light, and you know she admitted to it. So good. And I stood up and. The pain in my knee and my ankle and my arm. I was like, I hope this bitch dies of toenail cancer. Like, like I, <laughs> the lady I that hope, hit you. <laughs> yeah, I hope her toenails appendix bursts and she can't. <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm trying to wish things that could never possibly actually happen. Uh, yeah. but, but still, so, so this is actually out. a really interesting like cross section of the show because you say Raj that you don't like. To to you know to swear yeah. at, at someone like that yeah. ever no Trey is the exact opposite he will <laughs> dog cuss you at the drop of a hat especially <laughs> especially if it's warranted like yeah. if this same situation happened where this lady ran into Trey yeah despite any sort of of pain or injuries Trey would have fallen out of his vehicle and started throwing C bombs so much so you would have thought it was Desert Storm. <laughs> you though, Raj, you want yeah. nothing to do with that. It's it's you know uh, you're, you're I, very you're very you're very centered and 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 Nirvana esque about it. Me, yeah. I'm kind of in the middle. I will swear, I will swear at you bad if justified enough. Otherwise, but I'm working on it. So that's yeah, I, me in the middle. I'm trying I, not to do that. I'm trying to get closer to you, Raj. 
Meanwhile, yeah. Trey has uh, basically uh, embraced his darkness. <laughs> and why? Uh, why wouldn't you? <laughs> so it's very it is, cathartic. <laughs> it's, it's very cathartic when you know when someone s- says something stupid or does something stupid to say that's really fucking stupid. <laughs> and he's wearing like <laughs> he's got the black shirt on. I'm, I'm like, as he's saying this, like I can feel his inner Sith Lord coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like, yeah, the only thing I'm we're gonna... <laughs> missing is is the lightning shooting out of his fingertips. But maybe that's because we don't see his hands currently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's not a ring light, then. That's not, that. yeah. <laughs> but, but like my first thought. <laughs> no, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. My first thought was, uh, I'm just waiting for him to be like, uh, and we have to go to break. You're in the treehouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of of the force lightning coming out of your fingers. His tray doesn't have to hit the actual button with his finger. <laughs> Pew, pew, pew. Bumper, pew. <laughs> You're in the treehouse. Visit us online at treehouseonair.com. Treehouse. Visit us online at treehouseonair.com. This segment of the Treehouse brought to you by our friends at Brooks Plumbing. Give them a call for any and all of those plumbing wants and needs. No job too big, no job too small. I know it's trite to say it, but it actually is true, especially when it comes to plumbing. Brooks Plumbing will make sure you and your pipes are taken care of. Give them a call, 214-368-3838 or the website brooksplumbingtexas.com. I am not above a pipe plumbing pun or alliteration for that. I, I do like it. I appreciate it very much. It, it makes my day. <laughs> uh, so since this is the first Friday episode of uh, the new year, I think it's important that we include at least a couple of the things that people are accustomed to hearing on Friday episodes. And I am, of course, talking about birthdays. We have uh, plenty of other stuff to uh, catch you up on that happened over the holidays, things that happened to us uh, that we'll uh, be covering that on Monday and next week as well and just moving forward in general. But, uh, you know, I didn't look up birthdays for nothing, so here we go. (laughs) Today is Friday, January 5th. 2024, it is time to start getting used to uh, changing that three to a four. My time frame on that is usually about six months. So sometime in June, I'll finally get accustomed to uh, riding 2024. But until then, it's going to be a lot of scratching out threes and putting fours on there. But birthdays today, the first of the new year here in the treehouse. Uh, Suki Waterhouse, she turns 32 today. Uh, She plays Karen Serko on Daisy Jones and the Six. She's also... Uh, the Queen's sister, Cecily of York, on Stars' The White Princess. And that just reminds me that there seem to be way too many fantasy shows and movies to keep track of these days. And I mean, you had the first, you know, Lord of the Rings movies, and then they mm-hmm. went and did the Hobbit movies very shortly after that. Then you got mm-hmm. Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, um, like there's oh and then amazon had spent the most money on a television show ever for i think it was a pre-hobbit type thing or a pre-game yeah. of thrones type pre-game thing this is what i mean no. it's so saturated no I get that was lost. amazon and then you was, throw in all the new zelda video games i can't keep up amazon did the ring of power which was a a kind of prequel to the hobbit and lord of the rings yeah and oh. hbo did what is it Dragon something, which Whatever. was the yeah the prequel of, to Game of Thrones, yeah right. And you've yeah. also had three Star Wars movies come mm-hmm. out since then. Yeah, uh, so fantasy stuff is extremely saturated, and it's weird. Which, like, but I will like, say I this: Go ahead, Trey. Rebel Moon on Netflix, the Zack Snyder movie. Yeah, excellent movie. 
Okay. Interesting. I, just, I, I, I can't do the, the fantasy thing, especially like the Game of Thrones thing. Like one of my best friends is a little person, and, and and Peter Dinklage is on that show where he's like the the bad king, and I'm like, really? Like my friend can't get anything off the top shelf. How are you ruling an entire people? Like I can't. I, I watch can't. the show; it'll make sense. <laughs> it does not. Trust me. It does actually. Friends, when you watch the will... show, when you watch Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. uh, it's part of the story, obviously, that he's not a quote unquote normal sized individual. Mm-hmm. But that's something that his character deals with. It's part mm-hmm. of, you know, what he's had to deal with his entire life. And because of that, people, you know, d- they underestimate him and he still, you know, rises. To Le- power. Legitimately, one of my best friends is a little person. If I move his coke too far away, he's screwed as far as getting his, his, his thirst quenched. <laughs> like, you know I can't what, Raj? I've been reading a lot of self-help <laughs> books recently, and that says more about you than it does oh, about him. I, I do it all the time. <laughs> and it, in that case it says a lot about you i'm entertained he's it. entertained come on <laughs> it's all fun and games until he bites your knee off <laughs> so anyway an actress from one of those fantasy shows is uh, uh celebrating a birthday today uh Sort of a fantasy show from Laguna Beach and the Hills on MTV. Kristen Cavallari is 37. Uh, she was also married uh, for a short while to uh, former NFL quarterback Jay Cutler, and he's still unimpressed by it. Uh, Dead Mouse <laughs> is 43 today. January Jones, uh, who I best know as uh, Betty Draper on Mad Men, she's 46 today. She was also Emma Frost in X Men First Class. And uh, she was also on uh, Last Man on Earth for a while, although I didn't see that, so I'm not really sure. Bradley Cooper, probably one of the uh, greatest actors of his generation, I would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is 49 today. Um, he's been in some amazing films. A Star is Born, American Sniper. Uh, he was superb as Phil in the Hangover movies. Yep. Uh, and he was also absolutely wonderful as Rocket in the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, slash Avengers movies. Loved him in that. And it didn't even sound like him in those. Some people didn't even realize it was him for a while. Mm-hmm. I, so I say that he's a really fine actor. Silver Linings Playbook. But then I saw a photo once, and I see it every once in a while online, where he did a stage play of uh, The Elephant Man. And mm. instead of, you can look this up as I'm telling you guys this, you can do Bradley Cooper, Elephant Man, and then click image. Instead of him going through prosthetics or stage makeup, whatever the case is, to make him look super disfigured as the Elephant Man is supposed to be in the, in the story, he instead decides to go crazy physical acting and physically turn his body in ways to make himself appear deformed. When in reality, to me, it just looks like Bradley Cooper making fun of very yes. un- unpolitically correct, retarded person the way kids did when we were all kindergartners. Yeah. And because of that, it's one of those things I can't unsee. So I see Bradley Cooper and all these things and he's supposed to be really good looking, but I inevitably think of him chucking his arm into the side and then the face to the side and just looking really, really bad. Yeah, that's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, all, the only that's thing he's just... missing, the only thing he's missing, and maybe he did it during the play, I don't know, I've only seen the still image, is <laughs> is is doing the hand over the chest thing that, again, is completely deplorable. Uh, yes. But, you know, was, was commonplace, you know, 30 years ago. Yeah, that's, uh, like, that's just not, <laughs> you know, that's when you know you're a star. When the director's like, should we tell him that this is not cool? And they're like, it's fucking Bradley Cooper. <laughs> exactly. You're doing great up there, Brad. Doing great. Look great. <laughs> Superb. Totally look his figure. Yeah, you don't look having... handsome at all. Yeah. <laughs> We're not selling tickets to handicapped people, are we? Because this is... <laughs> 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 There's going to be a lot of refunds. <laughs> it's okay. He dates supermodels. He can do this. It's fine. Yeah, but they don't. <laughs> <laughs> so happy birthday to Bradley Cooper. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> he is forty nine today. Uh, speaking of uh, odd looking, Marilyn Manson is fifty five, and uh, Vinny Jones. Speaking of X Men uh, movies, he played Juggernaut in X Men: The Last Stand. He was also in um, was it Lock, Deadpool uh, two as uh, Juggernaut. He's yep. fifty nine today. 
uh, Clancy Brown, 65, That's character actor name. for many, many years. He's the bad guy in the Highlander movie, the very first one, the, the Krieger, whatever it was. He was also the uh, the really awful prison guard in the Shawshank Redemption and a number of other things. But, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So he is 65 today. Uh, and uh, uh, even though Trey hasn't had a drop of alcohol in over seven years and uh, he still appreciates a fine, fine bartender, not only because he is one some nights working in the service industry to slave away to keep this podcast on the air. Thank you, Trey. Um, one of the finest bartenders ever is celebrating a birthday today. And I, of course, mean the one and only Ted Lang from The Love Boat. Oh, yeah. Nice. That's a, yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, what was the characters? Um, Isaac. Isaac. That's right. Oh, yeah. I or love, as most white him. people refer to, you know, the black bartender on the love boat. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. What's the Vinnie Jones? What, 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 Vinnie, what well, Vinnie Jones was a different one. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, what's this? Yeah. Vinnie Jones is 59. He's uh, ex, yeah, yeah, Juggernaut X-Men, in the X-Men yeah. movie. Yeah. Who's, but then uh, Ted Lang. Ted Lang. Ted Lang. Is, uh, All right. Yeah, 76 today. Good for him. Oh. But that's that's another actually classic example of the not so subtle racism of Hollywood when you go back and look at things in their time period. Yeah. Because um, you guys know I'm well on record as saying in the same time period, the 80s, there was only one black guy in Top Gun. And what was his call sign? Sundown. Yeah. And when it came time, <laughs> like if you notice, he was the only one available to fly with Maverick mm. when Goose died as if yeah. he was just like, what was he doing? He was just hanging out, waiting for someone to die and then get called up. He was there the whole time. Yeah. You saw him in that first scene when they all get to Top Gun, but then he's just not doing anything. So a white guy had to die for him to get in the in the cockpit, even though it was still in the back seat. Yeah. Similarly, on Love Boat, there's all these professions on the ship that the black actor could have been cast in. Yeah. It wasn't the captain. No. It, it wasn't, it wasn't as though well, this would have been funny. It wasn't the captain's daughter. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't the, the head amazing. of entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you want to be challenged as an actor. There you go. <laughs> and it wasn't it wasn't the ship's doctor. Instead, what what role did the the black guy play in the love boat? Service industry. He's serving all the drinks. He's the bartender. Yeah, he's the server. Yeah, that's exactly. I mean, it's it it wasn't just the eighties. Uh, you guys do remember oh, no. this uh, pesky little show called uh, ER. Uh, I don't know if you remember that show. One of the biggest shows of the 90s. No Indian doctor for 10 years. Uh, all white doctors. <laughs> See, therein lies the double-edged sword that Hollywood has to deal with. Because on one yeah. hand, like in the 90s, it was a huge complaint also on NBC that friends had the friends had no dark p- people of colored friends. It was all white people, right? They, they did so not. ER, ER was yeah. like, well... If we put an Indian doctor in the show, is that just playing into a stereotype or are we actually dealing with reality? So they they were kind of screwed either way. Had they started with an Indian doctor or four of them in the ER, then people yeah. would have said, ah, that's racist. That's, you're playing into stereotypes. But then not having one also seems racist. Yeah. And then, so uh, it used to be must see TV. I don't know if you remember that. It was NBC was mm-hmm. must see TV. Mm-hmm. And then they got sued uh, for not having people of color. Um, on the show, on their shows, and so this was their middle finger to the people that were suing them. Is uh, they uh, changed the slogan to uh, "more colorful," was what NBC was known as. So it went from was it really? TV. I don't remember yeah. that slogan. Wow. Musty TV, musty TV to more colorful. Why didn't they just so change it to "We got sued"? <laughs> we'll get some weight. <laughs> 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 I think I think I do remember that. <laughs> oh, gotta love Hollywood. <laughs> NBC, think we're... How common are Indians in podcastings? I want to make sure we're not falling into any stereotypes in the treehouse. <laughs> There's a billion people in India. I'm sure there's one or two of them out there. <laughs> I just like the slogan. NBC, we're working on it. <laughs> we'll find fun. Well, here in the treehouse, we've got ours. So uh, no more searching for us. 
Thanks for hanging out with us on the first episode of the new year. I hope it was plenty stupid for you. I feel good and stupid, especially now. Be sure to check out what's in store the rest of the year. And coming up on Monday, Inside the Treehouse, we will see you then. NBC, wasn't the Cosby's enough? (laughs) (laughs) The slippery slope, man. (laughs) Well done. Uh, <laughs> wasn't there like five of them? <laughs>